At their heart, cities are the absence of physical space between people. Cities are density, proximity, closeness. That proximity has plenty of upsides, like the ability to spread knowledge or to facilitate trade. But it also has downsides, like too much crime and too much traffic congestion. Perhaps the most important downside of urban density is the spread of disease. And for thousands of years, cities have been trying to limit the awful costs of urban contagion. If you live in a city in the West, you probably view contagious disease as an annoyance, not a terrible life-threatening scourge. We now have tools, antibiotics, vaccines, aqueducts, that have so far worked pretty well at preventing modern plagues. The one big exception was AIDS, which caused enormous damage to urban America during the 1980s and 1990s, and it still kills abundantly in sub-Saharan Africa. If you live in a wealthy country, you are now far more likely to die from cancer than cholera, but that wasn't true in the past. In 1900, a boy born in New York City was still expected to live six years less than a boy born in the countryside. That was about the same life expectancy gap that existed in the time of Shakespeare's London. In this section, we explore the contagious diseases that have often threatened cities. Why should you care why every sip of urban water doesn't carry the flavor of death? As AIDS reminds us, disease could strike again. And we need to be ready to fight back with the knowledge of how we fought disease in the past. You should also care about urban health because many of the developing world's cities remain remarkably unhealthy. And we're going to explore how to reduce illness in those places. You should care about urban death in Africa, primarily because they're people too. But perhaps also because plagues that begin in Africa might not stay in Africa. If we continue to treat waterborne illness with antibiotics rather than with better water systems, we may end up creating an antibiotic-resistant superbug that could threaten all of mankind. Finally, the story of urban health also matters because it helps us to understand how cities can work together to solve their own problems. The story of the fight against cholera remains relevant for thinking about the coalitions that could fight high housing costs today or excessive transportation congestion. Perhaps the most important advantage of urban proximity is that it enables us to work together to make our world better.